it's late. That's all right. You have me on your list. I can't tell if I'm here or not. Hi, Sherry. Hi there. I'm not showing up on my own system, so okay. We can't hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. I think you show talk again, Sherry. Let me see. Host muted me, so now maybe I'm back. Yeah, and you're you're a blank screen. It shows up as my name. <laughs> Perfectly anonymous. <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Chairman. You must be manipulating things here. <clears throat> On me. You all are ready to get started. Are we? Yeah, we can. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and, and calling the meeting to order, um, I'll read the COVID uh, preamble. Because of the continuation of the COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting is being held electronically over the Zoom platform. It is authorized by the county's declaration of local emergency, the county's continuity of government ordinance, this authority's resolution, and Virginia Code section 2.2-3708.2, subsection A3. The authority directors are not physically present at a single central location as it is unsafe or impractical to do so because of the pandemic and the county's declaration. The authority directors are participating electronically. This meeting is being held according to section six of the county's continuity of government ordinance. The public has real-time audiovisual access to this meeting over Zoom and real-time audio access over telephone, both as provided in the lawfully posted meeting notice. The public is also invited uh, to speak during the public comment period. Comments are limited to three minutes. Anyone interested in commenting should use the raise hand feature. If you are listening by telephone, please use the star nine feature to notify the facilitator. All speakers must identify themselves in the magisterial district where they live or have a business. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the county's website. Now I will ask the authority members to identify themselves and state their general physical lo location by a roll call. So we'll start with Jay Finnell. I'm here and my residence in the Whitehall district. Let's see, Peter Taylor. John Moore. I'm in my residence in the Samuel Miller district. Sherry Buttrick. I'm here in my office in the Department of Forestry building. Rose Emery. Hi, it's Rose Emery. I'm in uh, Free Union at my home. Uh, David Emmett. He said he wasn't going to make it. Is that right? Yes. Correct. David. David Mitchell. Jenny Moore. I'm at my home in the Whitehall district. And let's see, Hamilton Moses, Chip Moses. North Garden and Samuel Miller. All right, Mr. Chair, we've got six members present and that makes a quorum. Excellent. First order of business. Um, under other matters not listed, is this where we, um, is this where you do public comments, if there's anyone out there? Yes, that's right. Okay. Is anybody out there? I don't have anyone with their hand up at this time. Okay, great. Let's move on to the minutes. These are the minutes of the October meeting. Any questions from authority members? No. All right, so a motion to approve. So, so moved. moved. Second, Chip Moses. Who was the first? John Moore. Thank you. All right, discussion. We'll call vote. All right, uh, Ms. Moore. Aye. Aye. 
I'll count both of you as I then. Um, <laughs> uh, Ms. Emery. Oh, yes. Mr. Fennell. Aye. Dr. Moses. Aye. Ms. Buttrick. All righty, so after the minutes, the first item is the Stillhouse Ridge RPD boundary line adjustment, which we discussed two months back. Um, and I'll just do a quick refresher and then Mr. Delaria will take over. Uh, this was a property uh, in the Batesville area was done as a rural preservation development and the authority and the county hold an easement over the preservation track here in red. Uh, the current owners purchased the property this year in hopes of building their home on this property, but they have this issue that a corner of a building and a driveway from a, an adjacent parcel extend onto this preservation track and are complicating the both the easement situation and their ability to finance and build their home, which they are eagerly hoping to do soon. And uh, so the situation is how to resolve that, uh, that overlap. So Richie, I'll let you take it from there. So um, when, the, when the authority last considered, uh, considered this, we essentially had two options. And one was to do what I'll just call a land swap. And of course, the authority members are familiar that in order to do that, um, we have to check a, a fair number of boxes. Um, one of them being that, uh, that, uh, that the exchange of the property um, has to be essential to the orderly development of the county. Um, and and the, uh, general, the general feeling from the authority was um, that that was somewhat of a stretch and that it would be preferable to go a different route. The other route would be along the lines of um, consenting to a, a boundary line adjustment based upon, um, based upon an error that occurred uh, back in 2015. And so I took it that the authority charged um, Scott and me with um, going out and, and exploring that option. Um, I, I will say that in doing that, um, I, I found um, I, I am comfortable that the authority can um, can go down the go down the route of authorizing a deed a deed of correction or something similar. Um, <clears throat> in order to justify the deed of correction um, prior to the agreement to um, place this um, to place this uh, tract in a, as a preservation tract, um, there couldn't be a subsequent change in in feelings or. Um, circumstances that would that would somehow force the parties to change their mind. What I was looking for um, was some evidence that there was some form of an oversight um, in terms of 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 looking uh, of missing this and not correcting it. And I was hoping to find something that said that hey, look, this was a problem. We've identified it. Um, someone uh, was charged with um, fixing it. Um, and then it just kind of went by the wayside. And unfortunately, that, that does happen um, in, in these circumstances. Um, what I did find, and I don't know if Scott has that, is, well, first thing I will tell you is it, it, it's my, my conclusion that in, in looking this over um, from every party's point of view, it should have, it should have been addressed before, um, before the parcel was put into the, in, into the uh, preservation tract. Um, what you see on the screen right now is uh, an email um, from Mr. Hayden, who was the prior owner of the um, of, of the uh, of the track. And what he indicated at, at this time um, to Jim Cox, who is involved, who is representing Mr. Daniel at this point, uh, and Mrs. Daniel, um, is, is that he did contact the neighbor prior to um, prior to uh, uh, closing on the on the on the uh, preservation track. Um, and that would have been Mr. Chrysler. Um, so it, it did, it did, it was, um, it was brought up, it was realized. Um, I think from Mr. Hayden's point of view, it was something that should have been fixed um, and it wasn't. Now, I don't think it's a situation where we cast blame or on any one party for not getting it done. Um, it's something that should have been done. Um, and whether, um, whether 
the planning commission, whether they saw it, noted it and, and made direction um, or any of the other parties at that point in time. Um, it, it just, we don't have any hard, fast answers to that. Um, clearly it would have benefited Mr. Chrysler to have it done. It would have benefited Mr. Hayden. I think it would have benefited the county um, to have that to have that addressed. Um, I will say that I did reach out to Mr. Hayden's attorney um, was Randy Ralston. I'm not sure Randy's still practicing. I did ask his son if um, he would reach Mr. Hayden and give us permission not to look in the file, but for them to look through the file and see and share with us if there was any information saying, hey, look, we need to get this done. And, and someone just drops the ball. Um, I haven't heard back from them, and, and I was advised that in terms of, of um, John Ralston uh, reviewing those files, he'd have to pull it out of storage, and with the end of the year coming up, we didn't expect there was going to be a timely answer from that. Um, regardless, I feel comfortable that Mr. Hayden brought it to Mr. Chrysler's attention. Um, it was on the plat uh, that all parties could see, including, um, including the county, um, and it just it just wasn't addressed. Um, I did look through um, the planning commission, uh, the subdivision records and, and plats and notes and memos that the county keeps um, in terms of this particular subdivision. And I found absolutely nothing um, that even mentioned the encroachment. Um, so it, it's, I feel comfortable in saying that it's an error in the sense that it was an oversight. Um, it's something that should have been done. They, uh, at least Mr. Hayden and Mr. Chrysler were aware of it um, and, and it wasn't addressed. So I, I, I feel as if um, that, that, the, uh, that the authority can, uh, can uh, uh, agree with or consent um, to the boundary line adjustment and a deed of correction or other document that's needed. And, and when you look at the, the motion, that's that's what it. Um, that's what it's geared towards is to allow is to allow the chair um, to sign any document that's needed to to make this exchange. Now, I, I will say, in terms of the um, in terms of the exchange, I think it puts the authority in a better position than it would be had had they just simply corrected um, corrected the error. I'm fairly well convinced that if the parties, if if Hayden and Chrysler had had corrected the error back in in 2015, if they had corrected it back then, they simply would have um, given, uh, they, they just would have um, uh, uh, given the, the, the land um, to Mr. Chrysler and, um, and taken it away from, the, uh, from, from the, uh, the track. And the reason I say that is because there was information, it may have been Mr. Hayden's email, indicating that the parties thought that a creek that ran, I think to the north side of the driveway on Chrysler property, that that was the boundary line. Um, and whether that has moved over the years or whether the tree where any mark, uh, any of the um, irons were, were, were set, um, whether that's changed, it's impossible to say because the prior um, surveys and plats, um, they, don't, they don't indicate the location of the buildings. Um, the encroaching house was built, I think around 1950, and there's no survey until you get to, um, the, I think 2014 survey that um, demonstrates where that where that where that house is. Um, so um, the bottom line is that I think it's appropriate for us to move forward. Um, I call it a deed of correction. I think there's going to have to be something of record showing the change in the boundary line, and um, that the additional property that the um, that the the preservation tract will receive is under the um, terms of our conservation easement. Um, so at the end of the day, I, I just think it, it, puts the con it puts the conservation authority in a better position. Um, so with that, I will certainly entertain uh, questions the best that I can. Thank you, Richard. Any questions? Has everybody already read the motion? Mm-hmm. Yes. A simple motion to adopt what's on the screen, um, I, I think, would suffice. I don't think we need to read through it, but we certainly can. Good with that. Are there, is there a motion to approve? I'll move it. Thank you, Dr. Moses. Is there a second? I'll second it, Rose. I can Thank do the you. roll call. All right, so Director Fennell. Oh, is there any discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, sorry. Is there any discussion? Okay, roll call. Director Fennell. Aye. Um, Pete Taylor, he show up? No. Director Buttrick? Aye. Director Emery? Aye. Director, let's see, um, Mitchell, Dave Mitchell, did he show up? So, but I can't see it. Director Moore? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got two Director <laughs> Moores. Let's go with Director Jenny Moore now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aye. And then Director Moses. Aye. All right. So that motion um, passes unanimously. Great. <clears throat> Thank Richie for all the work on that. And thank you all for moving that along. And I'll be sure to let the landowners know tonight that uh, we're making progress on this. Great, thank you. All right, on to the Alexander proposal. Okay, so again, I'll just do a quick refresher. This is Logan, Logan Farm, I'm still saying that wrong. Uh, in the northeastern part of the county, 153 acres and uh, approximately seven poten potential dwellings limited on this historic farm. Uh, last time we spent a lot of time talking about the historic preservation terms and it was somewhat vaguely phrased as saying that all contributing structures, accessory structures would have to be uh, subject to the no willful demolition section. That's been refined to say that uh, the no willful demolition does apply to all three dwellings, but also to the barn, garage, and smokehouse, um, which I'll show you in just a moment. And also we reduced the riparian buffer from 100 feet to 35 as requested and made the donors requested exception to the buffer terms for use of a, a, a open deck in an already open portion of the buffer. So here are the, the historic structures in the site. Uh, the ones with the green tags are subject to the no willful demolition requirement. The two with the gray tags are not. Uh, let's say the granary or corn crib structure is not in the best shape. And then the one labeled as large barn, it's only the short piece here that's actually old, it's been modified significantly with these additions that are not historic. And frankly, it's a fairly bizarre and difficult to use structure. So the uh, landowners were not willing to subject, subject that to the historic preservation terms. Um, it, it, as mentioned last month, it's a very odd structure that has a, a concrete lip around it, makes it virtually unusable for most kinds of livestock. All right, um, so that's my reminder section, and then I will turn it over to Richie to go over the steps. And Richie, just let me know when you're ready to go from item to item here. So just by, by way of preface, um, uh, Mr. Moyes, um, the attorney for uh, Ms. Alexander, um, prepared, prepared a deed um, and uh, he edited um, significantly the, the template that we use. Um, I, I will say that the edits um, in many cases um, are improvements. And so when we go to do ours, I'll probably look back at his deed to, um, when we work on our, our template and make modifications. However, um, th there were some uh, substantive changes. I don't think they were controversial, um, but they are changes from our template. And so it was uh, Scott and, and my opinion that we needed the, uh, the authority to approve these changes. Um, and I've just kind of put them up in order. I, I know one of them <clears throat> and the most important one, um, which again, I don't think is controversial, um, was the uh, no willful uh, destruction or demolition of the uh, contributing uh, buildings. Um, and that we'll see in line. Um, I, I will say we can go through this um, point by point um, and, and, and that's the way I structured it. I don't know if everyone has an opportunity to, to look at the email that I sent and look over the deed that uh, Mr. Moyes' draft of the deed with the changes. Um, and, and, and if that's the case and everyone's comfortable with it, 
Um, I, I didn't know if, if, if they were willing to um, move to accept those changes or if we want to go through it um, uh, point by point. Um, so I will do whatever the chair and, and uh, the, the board um, prefers. I don't think it's a huge, um, a huge task to go through um, the points point by points. Uh, Rich, I did not get that email. Then we'll go through. You did not? Oh, you know, no, no I did. No. Okay, well then let's go through point by point. I hate um, to do that, but I didn't get it. No, no, it's not It's not too lab laborious. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, I just didn't see such an email. Maybe it came, but I missed it, but I- I, I didn't get it. I, there talked. was, um, there, there was, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my dog's eating Christmas lights. Um, <laughs> uh, that's gonna hurt. Okay. Um, no, I, I will say that when I sent, and maybe I make, made the mistake a second time, I, I sent, um, I did send a group email before um, a, a last meeting. And, and I think maybe the group, the greet, the group email address was incorrect. I don't know, Scott can correct me on that. Um, However, um, we'll just go through it. <clears throat> Let's do it that way. Okay. 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 So um, <clears throat> one one area they added was um, they 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 uh, we have the section section two one um, lowercase three um, that uh, that uh, talks about what minor road improvements are and that those if there's minor road improvements to the road that comes by the property then um, that doesn't constitute a, 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 a violation of the, um, of the easement. The one thing that the donor did add in there, um, so um, the, usually the minor road improvements, they don't include, as it says, the addition of new travel lanes. It will add a bike lane. And, and the reason I highlighted this had a lot to do with the, um, uh, the rigory, um, that, uh, that, that VDOT matter that we had um, recently. And I know that the board was real conscientious of what kind of um, what kind of modifications VDOT could make to a particular property, um, but in this instance, what the um, what the donor added um, to the um, to that exception was that any area in excess of 25 feet from the edge of the existing property um, would not be um, would not be a uh, minor road improvement. The concern I had with that, and again, I don't know if you if you share it. But the concern I had with that is the notion that, well, anything less than 25 feet would be considered a minor road improvement. Um, and and I, 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 I thought that was a particular, particular concern in light of the rigory, um, the, the discussion that this board had and the consideration it had for protecting the rigory property. Um, so I wanted to raise that. I think it is a, it's a substantive change um, in the template that, that we have um, so it was my view that we would need the board to approve this change. What, what's the instigation for this request? I mean, I'm I, I don't. I, I I don't have an answer to that. Um, I, I don't have an answer to that. I, and I don't know if um, if Mr. Moyes or Miss Alexander is 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 here to answer. Because that. what they're referring to is 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 work VDOT would initiate. That would, you know, create some sort of an improvement or change in the road uh, within 25 feet of the existing right. That would mean they'd have to uh, expand the right of way. Am I reading that correctly, or does anybody else have a feeling for this? I just don't understand it. It's like a double negative here. It's basically giving VDOT 25 feet, but not more by right to do anything they want. Well, I, I, th I think yeah, that's, I think things, that's, huh? a, yeah, I think that's a reasonable interpretation and I've, and it's not consistent with how we handled the river. Do, do they know something we don't about what VDOT has planned for 231 in that section? I, it's <clears throat> thinking the same thing. I mean, I, I, it's, it seems almost innocuous because VDOT isn't going to do anything just in the road frontage of Logan's property for 25 feet that they aren't gonna do for the entire road. So I just don't really understand where they're coming from on this. I'm more curious than anything else. 
But yeah, it seems almost like they have a sense that there might be an expansion project down the road, so to speak. And I don't know, wouldn't this save us the headache of going through what we went through with the riggery then? <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I, I think it's clear they still can't add a travel lane. Um, right, they, Richie. Do you they have a sense they at all get, what this is about? No, sir. Okay. No, I, I mean it, it. They could expand a travel lane. They can't add a travel lane. They could well, add. They a, aren't like, going to do it for just the road frontage of Logan, which is, you know, not no. that extensive anyway. I mean, it does. But if we don't, if they don't have it, if they don't have it, and they take property, then of course we we get into having. They're going to have to substitute property. Well, that's sort of VDOT's problem, not the owners of Logan's property. Right, exactly. right? Well, this one would eliminate, this would, this would arguably eliminate that, that they could take up to 25 feet and, and, and contend that that's a minor road improvement. <laughs> Who it are they related to, to VDOT? <laughs> it doesn't it seem really to me like it's a very well-drafted um, provision, and the, the purpose of it seems unclear at I'm not sure why we want to take that up. We certainly need clarification before we can make a judgment one way or the other. I mean, it's a scenic road. It's a rural historic district. Um, you know, 50 feet, if you did this on both side, sides, would change the aspect of this road considerably if they could do it more without than any permission. Yeah. I mean, one possibility is if you all are comfortable with the rest of the measures that Richie is going to review and you're not comfortable with this one, then they have a choice of the, whether they want to record this year without this, whether they want to wait a year X, Y, Z, and, and go into this in more detail. Yeah, I just don't be, like approving things I can't make sense of. Yeah. That would be a fine way to proceed. Yeah, I agree with you, John. The intention is what concerns me. I mean, I mean so, is there an existing road plan for the need to expand this road? Is there something that they know? Not that we're aware of. I mean, as Richie said, they, they made, although most of them were not substantive, they made more changes to our template than are typical by far. So this may just be a piece from somebody else's template that they preferred or something like that. There may not be any real intention behind it. They may just be working with language they're used to from some other holder. Well, well let's and it might by this and move on. Yeah, I agree. Well, and I, and I will say if there's no motion to approve it, then we haven't changed the template. Okay. So if, the, if there's no motion and we're ready to move on, then yeah. no action's taken and, and this language isn't approved. Okay. Very good. Next. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't have to. Well, <laughs> I hope Sherry has seen this and she can guide us. This is the so they they added the no willful demolition um, language, and um, and and uh, and so I was satisfied with it. I, I thought they went well beyond what um, the board may may have required. Um, I was hoping Sherry had been had seen it in advance because I know she um, she she knows of several alternatives. But I thought this this captured um, probably to a greater extent what um, this what what this board had um, requested, and so I was comfortable with it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have not seen this. I'm sorry, Sherry. I don't. And, and how does this make our template better? I mean, what 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 is our template missing that this fixes? This this doesn't um, this is this doesn't make the template better. This was the authority wanted wanted something in the deed to protect the um, the qualified or the historic um, uh, buildings that were on the property. So this is this is directed um, specifically to this property. And Mr. Moy suggested this language. And we don't really have a uh, template language for historic preservation and something sure. we need to work on. So right. this is an additional restriction that our typical template doesn't really cover. 
rather than a change to some other language we already have. I mean, I will say there's a lot of obligation for uh, the holder here. Um, I mean, I know that VOF would not take this up because they can't do it. They wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I worry a bit when the authority takes on things that um, have a lot of obligation to them. I mean, how versed is um, the authority staff on the Secretary of the Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties and the guideline of treatment of historic properties rehabilitation? Not very of that. Is it? necessary for any language of this type to be in what we accept? All, all we said at the prior discussion was we didn't want willful destruction of the existing historic buildings, We're not specifying how they would be reconstructed in the event they were destroyed inadvertently. I recall the discussion correctly. The authority wanted to see in more detail what was being required in terms of protection. However, I will say that other recent deeds have not gone into anything like this level of detail. For example, the Guthrie Hall easement, which is Knockwood nearly finished, just has uh, no willful, just basically says no willful demolition, and then makes provisions for what can happen if the structure in question is lost to casualty. That's about all it says. So what we could do is, <clears throat> is since we've already approved uh, language in the Guthrie Hall um, donation, is there could be um, there could be a motion to uh, approve the addition of uh, similar language to the Guthrie Hall donation um, in in place of this. Yeah, I don't know what um, the Guthrie Hall donation has, but Richie, I think I sent you some months ago the simple and maybe not entirely adequate, but um, certainly simple language that VOF uses for uh, no demolition. And that at least is safe. So can we move to um, adopt that VOF language um, and trust me to pull it and to, um, and to place it into, the, uh, into this donation deed? If that's the case, then I'll be happy to do that. I just need a need a motion to do that. I'm comfortable with that. Like this this language here just puts a lot of burden on the donor. Sure does. Put well, a lot of burden on Scott. And his right. Folks, and I'm not. I mean, I'm wondering about this garage. I mean, to what degree do we really have to talk about whether the garage can be materially altered and put back in keeping with historic character. I mean, it may, it didn't look too historic to begin with as it went by. <laughs> right. I mean, it'd be more instructive to sort of talk about the structures that were listed as being contributing to the Southwest Mountains Rural Historic District and, you know, key on, on those in particular, I, I don't know. Yeah, and all those have to be is 50 years old, so okay, we might have a 1950s garage here. Um, right. But anyway, to get back to the first question, I would be comfortable with using the, the simple BOF language, which Richie, I'm happy to supply again once I can get out of this and get into where I need to get to to get it. Would you like to make that a motion? <laughs> Consider it a motion. A I'll second. second that. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Do we need to discuss this or move this to a vote? All right. Uh, when you guys could uh, do the roll call. I'll do it. Um, Director Fennell. Aye. Uh, let's see. Um, Director John Moore. Aye. Director Sherry Buttrick. Aye. Director Rose Emery. Aye. 
uh, Director Jenny Moore. Aye. And let's see, Director Moses. Aye. All right. Next okay. point in this. Well, this is where I might be confused because I had building envelopes. Citing of buildings, uh, um, citing the envelope sketch is pending. The donor can advise at the meeting if deemed appropriate. Um, so Scott may have to clarify, help help me on that. I had I just had a note that um, that they had mentioned. Uh, Scott, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, so just saying that uh, I think the reason that there is not a building envelope is that the dwellings would have to, be, if they're replaced, have to be replaced at the same location. Um, also, just wanted to point out, Mr. Mays, the, the attorney for this, is trying to get into the Zoom meeting, but isn't is having some trouble getting in. So I'm trying to catch up with him on email while we're doing this, but. Um, is he calling anyway. in, Scott? I have somebody that's calling in. Yeah, remind him he can call. Um, yeah, um, Carolyn, are you able to, to talk to the person on that call? Let me ask, uh -huh. I, I just need to unmute them. Uh, okay, with thanks. the person phoning in, could you please unmute and uh, tell us your name? A lot. So this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the provision that any any replacement dwelling or any other new building or structure must be constructed within the vicinity of the existing dwellings and within the building envelopes identified and showed on the sketch attached here to is to exhibit B. Yeah, there's never been any, any building envelope. Um, so what, what I, 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 I would look... Um, I would look for a motion to, and I, 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 well, I have it written up there to authorize staff to approve the, um, to approve that map that would be attached if there is one. I don't like approving things I haven't seen particularly. Yeah, I think we need to see that. Yeah, it's a couple of things we're going to need to revisit on this. It sounds like. Okay. So I'll ask them if that, um, so let me ask um, in terms of direction for this, if they, if they say, hey, look, we don't need, we don't need a um, building envelope. We don't need an exhibit to demonstrate that. Um, is, are, we, are, are we good moving forward or do we need to see a building envelope? Well, it sounds like the language supersedes the need for a building envelope since they need to be in the locations, the existing locations. <laughs> It says it must be constructed within the vicinity of the existing dwellings and within, well, and then you get to the envelopes. Yeah, I think the vicinity of the existing dwellings is not sufficiently clear that you can enforce that. Yeah, it's does, too it, big. does it mean? Yeah, I think that's built? pretty unclear. So I'm hearing that we want to see a sketch. I would take that out. I mean, I'm not sure what that's supposed to, if that means every single new building, they just need an envelope. If they want to say a few key buildings have to go back where they are, then you can get away with, um, you know, replaced at the same location. I think they're they're better off with envelopes. Okay. It gives them more freedom. So same, no, um, <clears throat> no motion means no action, and um, and we'll just it, it it's not approved, and so I'll talk with the donor to get it. Um, to work on that. Right. Yeah, just give them our comments. Yeah. But the so thing that worries me is that is squishy language as much as lack of envelope. But if I were on the donors council side, I would think that they would be wise to have envelopes, but that's, we don't want to have to give them any tax direction, so. I'd just like to get clarification on Richie's previous question, which is if they're not proposing any envelopes, can we go ahead and process this the rest of this deed? Because my concern here is that this is the last likely time we're going to have, be able to meet 
before the end of the year. Um, I doubt we're going to be able to get this group back together, and I hate to push them into another year over yeah, yeah. a simple question like this. To, if you don't have envelopes, there has to be a way of protecting. I mean, this is on 231, right? Yes. Yes. So you have to protect the view from 231, and it probably goes out back to the mountain protection area, perhaps. I don't know if it goes how far back no. it goes, Sherry. No, it doesn't. Okay. But you can see the main house from the road. You got to look pretty quick, but it's yeah, you got to look fast. Yeah. I will say they suggested a sketch and they're, they're going to identify building envelopes. So, yeah, um, I just, I mean, I think they may have pulled that language from somewhere that they're just used to. I don't see why it's even necessary in this particular case. I mean, if they want one, fine, but we never want them. And we've got those, you know, like it says, it, and at least in our summary, it just says at the same location for the, for the dwellings. But keep in mind, you could build something, a big new metal agricultural building right on 231 if you don't have a setback or you don't have envelopes for non-dwelling uh, structures. Or, or, a, or a total building square footage or something. There's uh, know, is, is that a setback right there that I'm looking yeah, at? Yeah, there's a 500 foot structure setback already in the proposal. Oh, okay. That wouldn't protect the view shed from 231. No. Okay. I also don't understand under riparian buffers what this non enclosed deck of up to 250 square feet is permitted within the existing open area of the buffer. We an area, and we'll, we'll indicate this more precisely in the deed, but where I'm pointing on the screen here, there's an area of the buffer that is not forested it's just pasture right down to the banks uh -huh. and it's something they've had in their proposal since the beginning is they wanted to be able to um have a, a deck down in that area which is not really is not a roofed structure it's literally just a deck um but it, it wouldn't require the removal of any trees it's all just grass down there are they going to get a permit to do that it's in the floodplain yeah, that's the question is, can they actually do that? Um, I, I don't know if they can or not. That's that's on them to resolve that issue. Well, I don't, I don't want to approve something that's not approvable by some other arm of the county. Right. Can no, we, put, we can put language in there, if permissible, by county code. Uh, related to you, that. you've also reduced the um, stream buffer. Right. Yeah, clearly you have. But why did you go down to from 100 feet? To 35. I think uh, because the authority didn't time. believe 100 feet was appropriate. Well, I think one member didn't, but I don't know that the authority took that position. <laughs> uh, well, I believe that was the direction coming on out of the last meeting where we talked about this. Yeah, to be fair, I would agree that that was the direction that we seem to be inclining towards. There didn't seem to be any particular reason for the 100 feet, as I remember. Correct. But, you know, I, I think coming down the road, um, there may, <clears throat> I don't know when this is going to happen, but I suspect that over time that there's going to be a redefinition of the FEMA 100-year floodplains mm -hmm. in Albemarle County. So we don't know what that's going to be. Right. Well, that, yeah, and that doesn't really enter into the terms of the easement. That was just there as an illustration of, <clears throat> in fact, that was part of why, and I apologize for putting up the old map here, but part of the reason I had originally proposed the 100-foot uh, buffer was that it matched relatively well with the extent of the most recent uh, update to the FEMA 100-year floodplain. Um, now, like I said, a, a good part of the authority felt that that 100 feet was too much and wanted it back down to 35. So that's what we did in the latest terms. But uh, yeah, the reason the floodplain was on the map was not because the terms reflect the floodplain, but simply because I just wanted to illustrate where it was. So is yeah. the deck in the, in, in, even in the 35 feet? I mean, by going down to 35 feet, you don't resolve the deck issue? 
Because I mean, is the deck going to go? Could the deck go right over the stream? I mean, I, that's very unclear to me. What the well, certainly wasn't what they were what describing. They would no. want a deck for, but any, so what they what they are giving up is they're giving up um, any type of stream uh, stream crossings, um, and that's something that they just did voluntarily. Um, so I, you know, the the answer is can they build trails um, in the stream buffer? The answer is yes. Can they do stream crossings? The answer is yes. Um, could they get permission to build a bridge? Um, that's possible also. Um, so they have given that up under the easement. Um, so, do they own the property on the other side of the stream? Where do they? I don't bridge know. To? No, they don't. Well. I mean, I'm not sure it sounds like a smart thing to do to give up the ability to cross the stream. Right. That, they it's have not permitted. As they've drafted the easement, it's not permitted. Yeah, I wonder what they're thinking. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, the deck doesn't. Well, they don't need it. They don't own that land, so. <laughs> but the, no, they, the loss to them. They might be able to um, make a friend with their neighbor and ride a horse over there. And so they our don't template need a bridge for that. Our template um, um, permits the construction and maintenance of stream crossings, including improvements over the buffer strips, to access the crossings um, for pedestrians, livestock, and vehicles. Which crossings minimize um, crossings minimize the obstruction of water flow. Um, so they have they've they've stricken that from from the deed that wouldn't be permitted under the easement. Um, I mean, the vehicle crossings maybe so, but I just don't think it's a smart thing to do to, in a permanent easement, make it so that you cannot cross the stream with, you know, on your feet, on a horse, maybe in a four wheeler. It just doesn't make sense to me. All right. It almost seems like we need to pass that comment along to them. Um, it just seems like they're, they're, they're not thinking it through all the way. I mean, they're thinking it through from their own personal point of view. And exactly. that personal point of view may change if there's another person there some other time. Right, or so, that could be assembled onto that property later on. So I'm hearing there's a motion to um, include the, what is, uh, is section 2C about the construction and maintenance of stream crossings. Yeah, I think you want that. If you think vehicles is too much and too much of an eros erosion producing thing, airplay, that's fine. Take that out. But I would leave the thing, the rest of it in. I think it's it's just ill considered to take it out. Oh, okay. I, I'm confused about what, what kind of a stream crossing. Are we talking about culverting the stream and all of that? Or what? Well, if you don't own the other side, what can you do? I mean, you know, he, they only own to the middle of the stream. Yeah, but I take the point that, you know, at some point in the future, they might own the property next door or they might, I, well, I, I, get, I get the need for maybe a crossing. I'm only curious about what sort of a structure we're talking about to put in the stream. And again, they, they whoever, the governing, about putting a structure, whoever structure the governing the agency is that, that has control over approving the actual construction of a stream crossing, you, you know, is, is they're going to have control over what that looks like, I suppose. Uh, I just don't want to get crosswise with all of that business. Right. I, I will say that in, in um, floodplains that they can get permits for um, for bridges and that sort of thing. So if if the easement permits a stream crossing for vehicles, um, I suspect it could be designed in a bridge format as long as it minimizes obstruction of water flow. Could, could I come at this question from a slightly different direction? Sure. The, the, this is another example where uh, we're trying to second guess the intentions of a potential donor. If the donor wishes a restriction, it would seem that it would be prudent for us to accept that restriction unless it serves no public purpose or it's obviously unenforceable and misguided. In this case, they're giving up a stream crossing, which certainly arguably is not a public good. It's not a public purpose. 
and th they're restricting it in an entirely reasonable way. It's not capricious. So why would we have any difficulty with it? Yeah, I kind I kind of have to agree with that, I suppose. My feeling is it will bring the authority to grief because if you take away this person's personal inclination or uh, point of view, it is a reasonable thing for the next person to want it. And an absolute prohibition, I think, is going to cause uh, some problems. Is that because you have a particular? Is that because you have a particular question about stream crossings, or in, in general, Sherry? I think in general that uh, you should do as little as you need to do in a conservation easement to protect the land and protect the countryside and protect the specific conservation values that are here. I am just not convinced that saying that a trail that goes down into and across a creek um, is a conservation problem. I just, I just can't agree with that. Right. I mean, I feel like we're caught in a situation where it seems like we're trying to protect them against themselves a little bit. And I'm not sure that that's their job. Right. Well, if you're going to protect the long term durability of the easements, you don't want to put in items that are, in the worst case, idiosyncratic um, and difficult to defend. Um, I mean, yes, some forms of really aggressive um, grading for stream crossing might be considered erosion producing, but I think prohibiting any and all trails that would cross a creek does not make sense and is not well advised. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that, I don't know that, well, I, I, I think the intent here and I'm guessing, I suppose, is that we're talking about improved crossings, not just where a trail happens, uh, you know, a, a ford for lack of a better description. Um, Versus a culvert and riprap, et cetera. Right. Yeah, and I don't even know the stream, so I can't really speak to whether a culvert um, would do it, whether you can just simply hop across it. Um, if we have a great deal of time, I think we could create exactly the right degree of stream crossing here. But I feel like somebody suggested perhaps to these people that they just give that up as a way of getting their deck and that they didn't think about it and they said, yeah, sure. And uh, that is not what happened. Okay. Um, this right. is just one of, you know, a couple of dozen unexpected alterations to the template that we're you know, trying to, to get through and Richie has put in front of you all the ones that have some substance to them. Um, but no, we're, we're not bargaining with people over stream crossings versus decks. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, well, that's fine. If they wanna come back with a more limited form of stream crossing, fine. I don't think prohibiting the crossing from one property to another in perpetuity serves the public good and I wouldn't support it. Fair enough. This seems to go on, on your list of comments and notes for the donors. Uh, I'm making a note that um, they should come back with a come back with a a more limited limitation yeah, on really stream crossings because this this is going to put these people into next year thanks to the representation perhaps um and i think that's just too bad but never mind but they're the ones who, who've uh, created the problem not we haven't cr created it no but i think perhaps their councils created it well they have yeah right the timing the the, the burden of timing i don't i think we can just remove from our own conversation Correct. Is there um, is is the the board um, wanting to wanting to take any action on the two hundred and fifty square foot um, deck? 
or I don't understand the deck. I mean, is, I don't either. Is it going out over the stream or is no. it just in the bar? What's on earth is it for? I mean, they're going to have a band down there or a band floor? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I, I haven't seen anything like this myself, but according to the donors, uh, other properties in the area will have essentially a wooden flat deck, not roofed, uh, next to a stream where people will hang out. It's not over the stream, it's just close to the stream. It's a picnic site, place to sit kind of thing. I've never seen such a thing, but unless it was a dock, but this isn't a dock, this is just a deck. It's a land and dock. If, if you all decide that you're not comfortable with it and and you just take no action on it, which will be the same thing with the stream crossing and the uh, 25 foot thing with the roads, then they'll have the option to come back with a deed that leaves those items out and get done this year. Um, you know, with the 35 foot buffer, maybe they can push that deck 36 feet back and not be in the buffer at all. And then, you know, they have the choice of not making these alterations to the template and getting done this year or coming back in January with more clarifications on how and why they want these changes and not being able to get done till next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. May I just speculate about one question to ask? Um, Richie, they've not modified any of the no commercial use terms. <laughs> we have not gotten to that. We have gotten to that. Yes. Well, we, take, skipped, we skipped over that, and the answer is yes, they did modify the terms. Well, if you take all of these suggested changes together, it looks as though this is being prepared for an event facility. I'm afraid it does, too. I agree with Chip on that. Yeah, it seems like that 25-foot access might be for a turn lane, possibly. Yes. And here we see it. Right. These are the um, <clears throat> so these are the specific uses that they identified in the um, in their industrial and commercial activities, um, and of course our our template does not go into this detail. I don't now, think those it, are. I just don't think those are acceptable under a conservation easement. Yeah, I'm not at all sure. Um, Jay, you might want to speak to this, that a commercial stable couldn't be um, had within an easement and isn't in fact had within many, many easements, especially in Mr. Moyes' part of the world. Um, but I don't like this language one bit. Yeah, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm torn because that this is a very specific list of current commercial uses that are happening in the county and you know and the other side of it is is that you know farming and people that own farms do need to make incomes as well um but these are not traditional you know they fall under permitted agricultural because of the language out there now but it's not it's not in true essence agricultural i mean i think if you compare the template that we have um with this handful of uses, you'll probably find that most of them can be permitted at least on some size scale or location. And yeah. any size scale location limitations um, may be pertinent and affect the conservation, uh, you know, integrity of this thing. So I'm a little concerned with it just as a blanket thing, especially when we see the usual suspects of wineries and distilleries. Right. I'd, I'd like to note also that 250 square feet is quite a large um, structure for a deck. 20 by, let's think. 25 by 10. 25 by 10. That, that's not that big. That's not very big. No, that's, I mean, it sounds like a gazebo with no roof, um, a cocktail destination, but still. This body has has discussed this extensively regarding another property several years ago, and we did make a distinction uh, between commercial stabling, which is a traditional rural use, 
and uh, agricultural processing and particularly farm breweries, homestay, uh, a real red flag. Uh, and uh, it, it's so open-ended, particularly given the, the trend to bend zoning for those uses. A donor should not expect to have a, a property placed under conservation with all of the incentives to do so and also have commercial use that is this wide. It's way too wide, I think. I mean, I think some of these things on some scale and in some location are going to be fine, but just taking, go, departing from the standard form that we have at this point in the year without knowing what is on what's desired without necessarily having building envelopes. Um, we still haven't addressed the fact that John said that he thinks that 500 feet is too skinny to back from the road. Um, well, well the, the, the house is outside of, of that 500 feet and you can see the main house from the road. So ergo. Well, we haven't tried to make things invisible in the past. I think that's impractical. We've tried to make things distant, not completely obscured. 500 is fairly consistent for easements we've done along this and similar scenic highways. Um, at this point, I mean, I will say my concern was that maybe there were one or two minor concerns you all had that we could give them an opportunity to work around and get done by the end of the year. It's starting to sound to me more like you all have really significant concerns about the extent of the uses and several other questions on this. And maybe it's not so important to uh, scramble around and find a way for this to get done by the end of the year. Um, if you all have that many questions, it may well be that they just need to come back in January or February with answers to the questions. It's unfortunate that Mr. Mays, who was trying to get into the meeting, hasn't been able to do so. But uh, there's a lot of these questions that you all have or concerns that you all have that Richie and I can't answer because we don't know their future plans. Right. Individually, uh, the, yeah, individually, they seemed, you know, starting out with the 25 foot easement, they seemed kind of benign, but kind of putting the whole, all the pieces of the puzzle together. Seems like there's more going on here than a simple it easement. It may just be, is this David Moyes? Is that who this is? You said Mays. Is it Moyes or Mays? It's Mays. I have Moyes, M-O-Y-E-S, Mr. Moyes. Moyes, Mays, I don't have it. Yeah, he's a, a lawyer in Leesburg, I think, isn't he? I believe he may, so. He may be just looking at, say, the um, Land Trust of Virginia's template or something, but I think in the absence of you all really having a sense of where he's trying to go, whether you think the conservation effect of this is acceptable or not, um, just makes it so we shouldn't have it sort of rammed down our throat on December the 9th. I agree. It sounds like the message back to them then is, while the property is still of interest, the sheer number of alterations, not just number, number and character of alterations to the template leads the authority not to not be inclined to accept in its current form. Is that an accurate message to pass back? It is that they're, you know, again, I suppose if they want to use the current template and they want to address the visibility issue from the scenic road, um, there might be an avenue for doing something this year if there's an absolute um, push to do that. But I don't think all these changes are going to work. And we haven't even heard of them yet. I mean, we would need you all to make some sort of acceptance action. Uh, I'm not quite sure immediately how we would phrase that, but, um, you know, that the proposal, you know, authoring the share of the sign the, the deed consistent with the proposal, if the uh, changes to the, I don't know, the commercial terms, the riparian buffer and whatever else are not included, but it's almost, it's almost, you know, it's very hard to lay out what what isn't being accepted because there's so much. Right. I'm not in. I'm not in favor of that. I think that we're. I don't want to like being pushed into this. 
uh, I'm sorry they have, they missed the tax year, but uh, we need to consider this easement more thoroughly, I think, the terms. Well, if my memory serves, the, uh, the landowner did appear two months ago, and the sense that we had from her was quite reassuring. The language we're seeing now is a significant departure from what seemed to be her intentions. That needs to be explained, and we need to follow our own template without the these modifications, which are open-ended, in some cases difficult to enforce, and maybe uh, inconsistent with a conservation purpose. So and that's what if, I would tell the attorney. I agree. If they were to if they were to come back and say that we will we will simply follow uh, this body's template and add in the VOF language in terms of historic preservation. Um, I, I guess I'm asking, is there an inclination that this that this board would accept that? I would be Knowing fine with that as long as the view from 231 is adequately protected, whether, I don't know if um, John has a, a quick solution to that. I mean, back. I, I don't have any back. template language on that. I mean, beyond the 500 foot um, setback. Is that what well, you're... I'm talking about changing the number five to 650 or whatever John thinks or whatever is in, at the front facade of the house. Well, the easiest way to accomplish that is to simply go back to having a, a building envelope specified. Well, which we're not going to have this year anyway. Well, we're not going to have this this year. Okay. It's, it's just not going to happen. We are, unless we can convene for a special meeting to approve uh, accepting our template. I, I don't I don't see that happening. I, I, I'm just thinking about the, the the meetings that are still stacked up and then we get crushed down to, uh, you know, to the holiday season. Well, there the is, we, we have convened this group at year end. I think we did it at the last week of the year several years ago and I was still the chair. But it, so it, it's, it's possible to do it. But it, 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 as Sherry said, if if we protect 231 with no widening, we have building envelopes to protect the view shed and we follow our template, then that's an approvable easement, at least from this chair, from this, this viewpoint. Yeah, I, I mean, I would go with that. Either envelopes or move the, um, the 500 feet back to round it down right along the, the front of the house there. I mean, my guess is from a quick and dirty look at your map, it was 600 or 650. Um, and I would, be good with that, being sensitive to the end of the year thing, but I wouldn't be good with a pig and a poke type thing, which I think we're being offered here. So we would need a motion from, or an action from the authority stating that you all accept the proposal provided that it follows the template and increases the setback to 650 feet. Um, that removes all of those commercial changes, all the uh, historic changes, except for the VOF language and uh, the riparian buffer deck issue and all of that. I, I don't know if you all want to make that action or not, but that's your choice. I, I, I would guess. not. I, I would not um, want to make an emotion, but say that if if the, those terms are acceptable, we would approve it first thing after the new year, or try to convene a special meeting. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to offer the special meeting. I can't guarantee at all that we could pull that off right um, now. That, that's Forms are hard to get. I would, I would um, make that motion just for the sense of throwing it on the table and because I don't disagree with it. All right. Put that into words. Well, what, what I'm hearing is we go back to our template. Back to your template, yes, push the, the setback back to at least 600 feet uh, or have building envelopes. The, we can't uh, do we, we can't do building envelopes unless we can convene to meet and approve them. Unless you will authorize staff to approve yeah. them. You know, I feel like you could do envelopes, but anyway, um, protect the view from two thirty one. Can uh, we approve envelopes if they're past six fifty? If they're if they're huh. okay. Huh. Huh. So staff approval. Um, so a six hundred fifty foot setback. Envelope subject to staff approval as long as they don't interfere with the 650. Yeah, and I'm well, saying 650 because somebody who's got a measure tool can see if that is where the top of that um, driveway perhaps comes to or thereabouts. Um, 
I certainly don't want the 650 to be in the middle of the living room. Yep, and I'll get there. <laughs> Plus the VOF, um, I'll call it preservation language. Yeah, who started first? Andy Demolition. Right. And no, uh, no uh, widening of the road. I think that's part well, of that's the, not, going that, back to the template. You know. That's not in our template. Okay. We, yes. we're, so we're essentially going back to, um, you know, to, to, I guess, um, to the beginning and saying we're going to work off our template. So what so, does that do to the deck? The deck oh, wouldn't be included. Right. Yeah. No deck. You, you didn't take action to approve the deck. So we're, we're saying that stick with our template, okay. stick with our template. There's a 650 foot um, setback, assuming it doesn't cut through living rooms and buildings and things. Um, envelopes, as long as they're um, past the 650 foot setback, we would add uh, a VO, VOF, uh, no demo, a prohibition of demolition, willful demolition um, language. And I think that's where we're at. That's it, yeah. Skip, does that satisfy your concern about uh, commercial, intensive commercial uses, which I, I share that concern? So uh, I, yes, I, that, oh. I think it does. Well, we just kicked all that commercial stuff out. We're back we stick to what, we'd template. stick with our template. They would just have to, um, they would have to comply with zoning and other terms of right. the easement. Yep. You guys agree? And part of that in terms of those those um, envelopes, as long as they're past the 650 foot, 650 feet, they would be approved. Cool. All right. All right, uh, that's a motion that I think I've made and is on the table. Is there a second? Anyone? Can you guys hear me? Yes. <laughs> I can hear you. There's Is there not a second. second. <laughs> Is there no second? Okay. I, I would All right, we'll get from here. I, so I, I would take it that you could choose, you should convey that to the attorneys and the landowner. Yeah, absolutely. And they'll have an opportunity to amend the proposal and come back. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All righty. Um, are you all ready to go on to the next item? Yes. Sorry for the blur of slides going by here. All right. The remaining three items, I believe, are brief and fairly straightforward. Knock on wood. Um, the first two are slight revisions to proposals that you all have already approved. The first is Guthrie Hall. Um, again, this is the I was 800 and some acre property that you all had approved uh, some time back down in the Esmont area. And the change here is that originally the southern of the two parcels, parcel 128-1, uh, had rather than a building envelope, it had a, a setback and a maximum distance for structures. The, which is this, 500 feet and 1500 feet from Route 6, that area came out to roughly 67.4 acres. The donors now have changed their proposal to uh, this building envelope instead, which is an area that has been recently cut for an old pine stand and is 15.29 acres. To my mind, this is an improvement, uh, but this is a change in the approved building envelope, uh, which is what uh, we need you all to act on. It should be just a, a motion to approve the, the change not, in building envelope. I will say that- um, Scott, although this I'm not seeing it. Is it. Should it be on the screen? Oh, are you on the screen? Not on the screen. Hang on a second. Let me try again. Sorry about that. In the meantime, I note Mr. Sure. Mitchell has arrived. Mr. Mitchell, um, can you state your general location? Yeah. 
All right, he kept he, he kept messing with the screen, and my unmute started moving around. I had to chase it. Uh, I'm at my office in Charlottesville. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, sorry about the sharing problem. Um, can you all see this now? Yep. Yes. Okay, so the red outline on the map on the left is the Guthrie Hall property. Again, this is roughly 800 acres. The original proposal for the southern parcel of the two, which is parcel 128.1, was that rather than a normal envelope, there would be a setback of 500 feet from Route 6 and a maximum distance of 1,500 feet from Route 6 for building location. They have changed that to this exhibit on the right, which is a 15.29 acre surveyed area, which is roughly in the location of a recently harvested overaged pine stand. Uh, so again, I believe this is an improvement to the proposal. So that's what we need you all to act on. But I also wanted to let you know that while the what you all approved was for this southern parcel to be permitted to divide into two ownerships and have two dwellings each. They've actually changed the, the, the draft deed that we've received so that this one would not be divided at all and could only have two deeds rather than a total of four. So that's another improvement. You all don't need to act on that one because they've already done that. But what we do need uh, is an action on the change of the approved building envelope. All right, any questions? I'll move that. All right, is there a second? What, was that a move to approve? Yes. Yeah, I'll second. All right, see further discussion. Okay, roll call. Director Finnell. Aye. Uh, Director John Moore. Aye. Director Buttrick. She's muted. Director Emery. Uh, aye. Let's see, Director Mitchell. <laughs> he was with us. Looks frozen. No. no. Director uh, Jenny Moore. Aye. Yeah. Director Moses. That's fine. Aye. Let's go back to Director Buttrick. Aye. Oop, I heard that. She said aye. Yeah, aye. I heard that. And Director Mitchell. Aye. Yes. Can you hear me? Can. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. So I've got I got seven eyes and no nays. All right. Seven eyes, one nose. Okay. Thank you all. You know, there's a comparison map I did too late. Okay, uh, next item is the Smith proposal. This is uh, move the map here so I can see what I'm doing. Just down off of Old Lynchburg Road. Uh, and this is the, par the parcel that is unbuilt and is largely in the Mountain Overlay area. So construction above the 700 foot base elevation is prohibited. The question today is uh, the donor has decided that rather than the single dwelling up to 4,500 square feet, he would also like to have a secondary dwelling up to 800 square feet that could, for example, be located in it could be its own structure or it could be upstairs of a garage or something like that. Uh, this is still eliminating six potential dwellings. It's still not impacting that mountain protection area. So uh, I would recommend that you all accept this change. It seems minor. I'm happy to answer any questions. Also be freestanding. I didn't read that. I was reading the May to sort of be more hortatory and sort of insist upon the location. So I would suggest you just use a, a clearer phrasing there so that it does not appear that that is a requirement. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do that. I, I put that in there for everybody's information because I think that's what they currently intend to do. But I didn't want to write in such a way that they were required to do that. It just seems inflexible. Got it.
Sure, your audio is dropping now. Yeah, I'm here just like before, except that I'm going to leave because you're going to do Strasser and I'm conflicted out. And you now I, have. I uh, think you're, are you on, you're conflicted on Smith too, I believe. Is that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know Smith. Maybe. I mean, you tell me. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I'd forgotten this one is. I think so. So, I, I mean, so just, you, you just won't vote on this. If that's okay. Okay. Just go away, Sherry. <laughs> I am going to go away if you don't mind. Um, you've got David to fulfill the quorum. So, um, Merry Christmas, y'all. Bye. Oh, shoot. Okay. Merry Christmas. <laughs> we do still have a quorum. Yes. Hmm. Would you like a motion? Please. I move that the change be accepted. And I'll second that. Excellent. Is there any further discussion? Roll call. All right, Director Finnell. Aye. Uh, Director John Moore. Aye. Director, uh, nope, Sherry Buttrick has disqualified herself. Director Emery. Uh, aye. Director Mitchell. Aye. Um, Director Jenny Moore. Aye. And Director Moses. Aye. All right. So that motion passes six to zero. Thank you all. All right. One last scheduled item. This is not a change to a previous one. This is a new proposal that I wanted to bring to you all. Um, Honestly, this is more of a, are you interested than it is a firm recommendation. I couldn't really decide what I thought you all would prefer in this case. So I thought it just best to put it in front of you. Uh, the stress property is just a little over 10 acres. It does have uh, five development rights and it is adjacent. I'll zoom in the map here in a second to a easement that the authority took a couple of years ago. It is a very small property and it, does not have a lot of notable features of its own, but it is located within the South Fork of watershed and it does share exit uh, boundaries with the existing easements, both this property across Jones Mountain Road, which is an authority held easement and the one across Millington Road, which is uh, not directly adjacent, but close and is I believe a VOF easement. Um, so basically what this would do is reduce development pressure in the reservoir watershed. In the proposed terms, uh, it has one dwelling that could be replaced up to 2,000 square feet. Everything else is standard and we did not recommend any riparian buffers because there are no mapped streams on this property. So sorry for the jumping around there, mouse wheel. Um, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Is this for information or for action? It's for action if you all are inclined to accept it. Have you made a recommendation? I believe it meets the uh, authority's criteria. So I would recommend that you all accept it. However, I realize it's small and not uh, doesn't have dramatic features like a wetland or a historic home or something. So. Uh, I wasn't clear on where you all would want to go with this. If, if David Emmett were here, he would say this is far below the 40 acre standard. Right. But we have and, a few others like that as well. We have, and, if, and if this were not adjacent to an existing easement, it almost certainly would not be accepted. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the only thing it has going for it, really. Right. I'm a little conflicted. I am too. I'm not inclined to do it. We have had easements previously on properties of this size. However, of the ones I can remember, two were along a scenic highway, which was 231, I think, funnily enough. 
uh, and one was actually fairly close to this one down near Lake Elmoral, but had restrictions to protect an existing wooded area and wetland. Whereas this one, again, you know, is an important location given it's in the reservoir watershed and adjacent to another easement, but doesn't have specific features of its own to be protected. Yeah, it just doesn't have a ton of conservation value aside from getting rid of the four dwellings. If Mr. Hammett were here, he would also say our easements need to do something other than eliminate development. Right. <laughs> Todd, is, Jones, is that Jones Mountain Road? Is that a private road or a public road? It's a private road? road, yeah. And to access Billington Road, do we know how? And I should have the answer, but I don't. Do we know how um, how the owner gets across to Millington Road? Is that a shared road? Is that an easement? And I guess what I'm getting at is, is there is there a risk that it would be developed further because the easement or the access to the public road is inadequate? Um, you know, as it is now, it's open to question because we don't have a detailed enough survey to totally figure that out. But on the other hand, if somebody had enough money, they could purchase enough right away from the <laughs> southeast corner of that property down to Billington across yeah. the adjacent property. It's, Fair enough. Hey, can I ask a question? Uh, um, was this lot created after the, the zoning change, the rural area zoning change? I'm wondering how he got five development rights with absolutely no state road frontage. With no road frontage. Well, that, then that would answer the question is, if it has five development rights, it must have been there before. I can go pull up the 79 tax maps, but if it's got five development rights, that means it was in place as of 1980. But but as as part of a lot that had state road frontage. No, that, there that, a state road state road frontage was not a requirement for that allocation of development rights. Uh, uh, all, right, all right. Well, that that was part of my question. Yeah, the, the, that allocation in 1980 was to every parcel of record in the rural area zoning district. And there are a lot of parcels of record that don't have state road access. And I'm glad I don't own one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. don't know why. I don't know why I thought it was tied to state road frontage, but I did. It's not. Yeah, it's not. That's a single lane gravel road, right? Going from Millington up to the parcel, and yeah, the deal. The deal is you have to, if if you want to subdivide it, you've got to meet the county's design requirements, and you know a gravel road for five lots is probably not going to cut it. You're talking no. about fifty <laughs> foot minimum right away, and wherever that right of way hits, you gotta have a certain amount of visual sight distance so you don't pull out in front of a blind curve. Now this, this happens to sit on a spot that you do have that distance. Sight distance won't be an issue. It'll be, can you fit the road improvements within the existing easement? And there's another it, house further back down that road also. Right. Will anyone it, speak in favor of this easement? <laughs> That's a good question, Jeff. I will not, surprisingly. I think we have our answer. Yeah, right. So there can be a motion um, to not approve or to disapprove, or there can be no action. Say that it doesn't, no meet, action. it doesn't meet our criteria and there should be no action. We're done no action in my notes. Unless you all object, we'll just go on from there. Okay. All right, those are all of our scheduled items. All right. We have left is new business and old business. No new business or old business? Well, Mr. Chairman, we've made it through another year. We have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another year of not being in the same room. Maybe that's, I, the, I have... maybe that's the key to the effectiveness of this body. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one thing to say. I'm. I am leaving at the end of this year. My term's up, and I have a uh, a maximum of two boards that I'm willing to sit on. And I'm I've been asked to be a trustee at Miller School, where my son goes. So, right. excellent. I've only got so much time in my life. <laughs> well, we thank you for your time and your service. 
Yeah. I don't know if um, you all might be able to help. I reached out to the deputy clerk um, about reappointments. I noticed on my notes that um, there were four or five members whose term expires on Monday. I don't know if you all have received reappointments or, and I've asked if that's, if that has been done or if it's scheduled for the first, um, for the first meeting in, in July, which I understand there will be appointments by the new sitting board of supervisors. I so I don't know January. the answer. What's that? I hope you mean January. <laughs> right. I meant, what did I say? I, <laughs> July. What yeah, are the other J months? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah. January. I meant January. Um, <laughs> Rich. So, I'll get an answer to that and reach out. Um, hopefully I have your address because I'm not confident I have everybody's address at this point. Um, All right. Second thing is the January meeting is the annual meeting according to, to my notebook. Um, and so we'll set a schedule and we'll also have to elect officers for the year. So keep that in mind. Got it. D David, uh, much of your term coincided with mine. Um, as chairman, and I, I do appreciate the effort that we all put into the revision of the deeds uh, templates. And um, I think we should all remark on how we've uh, grown as a body. I, I agree. I mean, I, I think the templates and, and adhering to them, because we certainly hashed it out a lot to get to them. We, we, they're there for a reason. They're, they're there from my perspective so that Perspective people know what they're coming into and they can evaluate it appropriately and, and understand there's parameters. And then, you know, I, I think, I think it's just good to have, it's, it's not a, a black hole that people dive into and don't know what they're going to come up with. Well, so, you did bring a different perspective to our discussions and uh, we're all appreciative of that. I, I appreciate you appreciating my different perspective. <laughs> <laughs> been helpful to say the least thank you david all right it was good seeing y'all guys you too we'll miss so, you. yeah we will find it find it recruit another developer or builder <laughs> it happened sure yeah why not uh, so no new business or old business Move i don't to have adjourn. any We good to go? Sherry's not here. We can't adjourn. This Dr. Moses adjourned. <laughs> Scott, Richie, thank you again for all your hard work. All okay, time. I hope to see you tomorrow. Compliments yeah, of the in. season to everyone. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank Merry you. Christmas, everybody. Thank you, Chad. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy everyone. Christmas. Take Safe care, travels. everybody. Bye. See ya. Bye. Happy thank Christmas. You.